don't you lift your hands to the Almighty God and give Him all glory, give Him all honor, give Him all adoration. Bless His holy name. Worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise Him. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. Give Him all glory, all honor. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are serving the God of miracles. I know. Yes, I know. We are serving the God of miracles. I know. Yes, I know. Hallelujah. The one who can reverse the irreversible. Thank you for tonight. Thank you because this is a night none of us will ever forget. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight in the lives of all your children, do something new. In New York, do something new. In America, do something new. At the end of everything, Father, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. with one or two people and said, neighbor, I love you, but tonight my life will be brighter than yours. Tell two or three people that, let them know. I love you, but tonight my light is going to be brighter than yours. And if you believe that, then shout hallelujah. And then you may please be seated. I've been told that uh, we have to get out of here by 11 o'clock. That means uh, we have uh, roughly 35 minutes left. But that's okay. Uh, I know my father. The greatest sermon ever preached was a sermon on the mountain. It lasted 15 minutes. And so for God to perform a miracle, it doesn't have to take long. 
And even right now, as I'm speaking, somebody's already receiving a miracle. Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 5. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The very first time that there was light, several things happened. And these several things are going to happen here tonight. The first thing is, the Spirit of God moved. And when the Spirit of God moves, power will come down. You see, the Lord told the disciples in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8, that you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then in Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4, when the disciples were gathered together in one accord, like we are tonight, there was the, a moving, was a sound like the moving of a rushing mighty wind. And power came there. Now when the Spirit of God moves, as he's going to do tonight, and power comes down, several things do follow. I don't have time to tell you all, but I can tell you at least one. And that one has to do with something that happened in Judges chapter 14. From verse 5 to 6. If I'm rushing, it's because of time. Uh, the Bible tells us of a young man that God had destined to be very great. And as soon as he was born, the Spirit of God began to move him. His name was Samson. And then one day as he was going, a young lion roared at him, and the Spirit of God moved. And when the Spirit of God moved, he grabbed the lion that was coming to kill him and tore it into two. So the first thing that happens whenever the Spirit of God moves is that Anyone try to terminate your destiny will be terminated. So don't be surprised that after tonight, some people you thought were friends, some people you thought are relatives, um, they might experience something unexpected. Because I have come to tell you in the name of the one who sent me. Anyone from tonight who tries to terminate your destiny shall be terminated. When the Spirit of God moves, one other thing that I, I, I can't jump over that will happen is uh, seen in Exodus chapter 14 from verse 21 to 28. Exodus 14, 21 to 28. It tells us that when the children of Israel were on their way to the promised land and the enemy was uh, coming from behind, uh, the Spirit of God moved across the Red Sea, the Red sea and the Red Sea opened. Whenever the Spirit of God moves, 
where there was no way before, there will be a way. So there is someone listening to me here tonight. Ways that you never knew were there before. We begin to open unto you from now. And then, uh, tonight, it's a pity we have no time. But then we have God. Second thing that happened, the very first time that there was light, was that God spoke. When the Spirit of God moved, then God spoke and said, let there be light. God spoke. That was the first time ever that God spoke. And whenever God speaks, according to Psalm 107 verse 20, Psalm 107 verse 20, the Bible says he, he sends his word and he healed them and deliver them from their dis disruptions. In other words, even right now, as I'm speaking on behalf of my Father in heaven, someone is getting healed. Yeah. Not only getting healed, but getting delivered yeah. from what would have been a disruption. In other words, there is someone here who might not know it. But there is a danger uh, moving in about to destroy you. But because you have come tonight, the word of God is coming forward. And there will be deliverance. And then let me, let me move on. The third thing that happens, the first time that <laughs> I can hear somebody laughing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your joy has just started. And the next thing that happened on that day, that first time that there was light, it was that there was testimony. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, God spoke and said, let there be light. And what happened? There was light. You see, whenever God speaks, it's a decree. God never said, well, uh, maybe this should be. No, no, no. When he said, let there be light, there was light. In the name that's above every other name, somebody will have a testimony tonight. God said in Isaiah chapter 55, from verse 10 to 11, Isaiah 55, 10 to 11, He said, my word that proceeds out of my mouth will not return to me void. And I am speaking on his behalf tonight. I'm saying to somebody, from now on, it will be well with you. Let me say a heavier one. In the name that's above every other name, there's somebody here tonight who will never weep again. If you are the one, let me hear you shout hallelujah. But the fourth thing that happened, that first time when there was light, was that before God spoke, there was confusion. He said, God made the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form. Without form means it was disorderly. It was confused. It was after God spoke that confusion ends. And so I stand here today to decree in the name that's above every other name that every confusion in your life will end tonight. See, 
when, when we talk of confusion, the very good illustration will be found in Mark chapter 4, from verse 35 to 41. Mark 4, 35 to 41. It, it, it tells us that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was with the disciples, and he was sleeping, and all of a sudden, there was a storm. Another word for storm is total confusion. But then when they woke up the Lord Jesus Christ, he got up and spoke a word. And immediately everything became calm. In the name of the one who sent me, I speak a word to your storm. And I say, peace be still. I, 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 I'm tempted to tell this story very quickly. Um, I'm watching the time. <laughs> Several years ago, some of my children saw how busy I had been, and they decided that they would send me on a cruise. They said, you must rest. So they bought the ticket, and, uh, and if you really want a good holiday, go on a cruise. I enjoyed myself. Oh, everything was wonderful. Those people seem to rejoice if you overeat. <laughs> and then came the last night, and a storm came. And I'm telling you, a storm at sea is a terrible thing. As huge as the boat was, this storm would just pick us up, lift us up about two uh, stories and drop us. So everything was, I mean, lives became like bullets flying all over the place. All was confused. And it got to a stage that the captain called us together and said, brethren, um, well, by now you see we have a little problem, uh, but don't worry. Um, Storms I see are in 12 categories. Category 1 is the smallest. Category 12 is the highest. And we are now, don't worry, we are only in category 10. <laughs> uh, so just go to your room and stay there. Uh, I go to my room and I said, Lord, what am I doing here? And God spoke a word. Son, when I was here on earth and there was a storm, what did the Bible say I was doing? The Bible said you were sleeping. He said, I sleep. From now on, that storm that is causing you sleepless nights is over. And the next thing that happened that first time that there was light was that emptiness ended. Because the Bible said before God spoke, the earth was not just without form, it was void. Void means empty. It was after God spoke and said, let there be light, that things began to happen. It was then that fish filled the seas, birds filled the air, animals filled the air. What was empty suddenly became full. Now that's good news for those of you who might be here uh, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name that's above every other name, your emptiness is over. But it's not for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb alone. If you re remember the story of uh, Peter, who fished all night and caught nothing, that is another meaning of that turned an empty boat to a boat that became so full of fish 
that somebody has had to come and help. There are some of you here in New York listening to me tonight. You have been here for years. Maybe some of you just come. But you have labored and there's nothing to show for it. The reason some of you can't even come back home or go back to your homeland is because there's nothing to show for all the years that you have been here. But I stand tonight to represent my Father in heaven and to speak a word to you to say, from now on, your emptiness is over. Ah, how I wish I can share some testimonies with you. <laughs> well, I will quickly share this one with you. Some of you have had it before. I have just become general overseer and I was visiting our little churches. And then I came to one of the churches. As I finished preaching, I, and I was waiting outside for my car to come so I can begin to go. And I saw a young man coming towards me, and he was, uh, uh, he, he was prostrating and standing. And finally, he got close to me and dropped what we will call five cents into my pocket, and then began to run. I took out what he dropped in my pocket, and I called him back. Why are you running? He said, I heard that the general overseer was coming. How can I give this great man of God five cents? He said, but that's all I have. I told him, I said, son, I will spend this money myself. And I promise you, you will never lack again. I was back in the same church the following year. And the boy, same boy was coming, this time boldly. And, you know, when you prosper, your work change. Mm. I decree in the name that's above every other name, somebody here is moving to another level. And then another thing, because uh, I have about 15 minutes left now. Another thing that happened that night, was, uh, that day when there was light, was that God separated light from darkness. God put a barrier between light and darkness. According to Colossians chapter 1, from verse 12 to 13, Colossians 1, 12 to 13, the Almighty God can take you, can translate you out of darkness into light. In Exodus 14, from verse 1 to 21, Exodus 14, 1 to 21, that I mentioned earlier, when God opened the Red Sea, all the generational enemies of Israel got drowned in one night. I don't know for how long a curse in your family has been disturbing your presence. But tonight, that is over. Because God is going to separate you permanently from every force of darkness. A young man came to me not too long ago, just about uh, 20 or so years ago, he was 39 years old, and he came trembling because he was about to turn 40. He says, sir, the, I'm the oldest man in my family, and I'm not yet 40 years old. He said there is a curse in the family that any man in the family, when they reach 40, they die. I said, well, I know somebody who can cancel a curse. Uh, cancel the curse in the name of my father. Uh, he's over 60 now, and he's still alive. Every curse in your family, because you came tonight, I can't do in Jesus. Name. 
But because of time, the seventh thing that happened that first day, first time there was light, was that God himself looked down from heaven and said, ah, this is good. Now, if God says something is good, it must be good. <laughs> Everything about darkness is bad. Everything about light is good. Sickness is bad. Healing is good. Poverty is bad. Don't let anybody deceive you. Worthy is good. Mm, I, I have been poor. I am on my way to becoming rich. I'm not there yet, but uh, I will reach there. So I know, I've tasted both. I know which one I will choose. And I decree in the name that's above every other name, none of you will die poor. Barrenness is bad. Fruitfulness is good. Nobody, nobody ever congratulates somebody who is barren. Failure is bad. They don't congratulate you for being a failure. Success is good. Uh, the next time that you hear, that's what my coach told me years ago. The next time you hear, when they tell you that all you need to do, all that is important is in sports, just participate. That's all. That's what matters. Not winning. Tell them, why don't they give medals to those who never won? From tonight on, well, you won't fail again. Uh, I, I can go on and on, but I don't have the time. You see, the opposite of bad is good. It means the opposite of very bad is what? Very good. And there are some of you who are in very bad situations. That's why God arranged this meeting. Because he wants to turn things around so that your very bad can become very good. So that the next time I see you, you will come and say, <laughs> you, you don't recognize me, sir, do you? And I will say, well, not exactly. You will say, oh, I was there at that meeting. My very bad has become very good. That will be your testimony in Jesus' name. I'm about to close. But I'm tempted to tell you just one more testimony. It was a friend of mine, too. He, his situation was so bad. Anytime you say, ask for something special, he will always say, God, give me a breakthrough. When he comes to me for prayers, Daddy, please pray for me. I need a breakthrough. Then one day he came, excited. He said, I've won a contract. I said, you? He said, yes. I said, you won't believe how much. I said, yes, you try me. And he said, I've won a contract for 50 million naira. At that time, a naira was equal to a dollar. I looked at him and said, you don't know what you are talking about. <laughs> if you won a contract for 50,000 kobo, I will rejoice with you. He said, uh, 50 million, sir. But at the end of the month, he came to show me proof. With a, he said, I've brought a gift for you. I've paid my tithe, but this is a gift because you are the one who prayed. And he brought me a check for five million. Then I knew <laughs> that he wasn't in line. Not too long after that, I was traveling and in first class by air. Somebody bought the ticket, by the way. And I saw him there in first class. <laughs> I looked at him. And I began to laugh. 
and he too began to laugh. And everybody there were looking at us. They didn't know why, why we were laughing. But we were laughing because level has changed. Every one of you here tonight, your level will change. All those who have written you off will come and celebrate with you. Now that God is here tonight. And he can do all I have said. And much more that I don't have time to talk about. But you know one thing about light is that it doesn't matter how bright the sun may be shining outside. If you pull all the curtains and switch off all the light, you will be in darkness. You have to open the door for light to come in. And Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice, I will, and open the door to me, I will come in. Everything I've said tonight can happen in your life within the next one week. If you open the door to Jesus, he's knocking at the door. He brought me all the way from Africa to come and knock at the door of your heart. If you open the door to him, he will come in tonight. If you don't open the door, he will go away and your darkness will remain. And so I'm going to give you just two minutes. I still have that much time. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you want to open the door to him and say, come, come and take over my life. Come and be the light of my life. Rush forward and I will pray for your salvation. I will count from one to four. I understand that those of you who are up there, you may not find it easy to come here. At least move forward, come as close forward as you can, and I will pray for your salvation. I'm counting now. One. This is your day, this is your day. Because if you, if you read that passage very well, I don't have the time to go to the details. The Bible says, God looked at everything he has done and he said, behold, it was the first day. This is your first day of the rest of your life. And it can be the first day of joy, the first day of healing, the first day of prosperity, the first day of victory. But you have to come forward. Two, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. God bless you. I can see those of you who are coming. God bless you. And those of you who are clapping, keep clapping. Your hands will never grow dry. Hurry up, those of you who are coming. Hurry up. And those of you who can make your way down from the gallery, you can come if you can. If you can, just come as close to the front as you can. Four, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Okay, those of you who have already come forward and those of you are on the way, Talk to the Lord now and say, Lord Jesus, please save my soul. I want today to be my first day of miracles, of signs, of wonders. You see, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Today can be the beginning of new things for you. Beautiful things. Ask him, please save my soul. And the rest of you, stretch your hands to these people and intercede for them. Pray that the Almighty God, who saved your soul, will save their own souls also. 
pray that the Almighty God will give them a new salvation. That from now on, everything will become new for them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. My Father, my God, I want to say thank you for your word. Thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Father, please receive them in Jesus' name. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Give them a brand new beginning. From now on, any time they call on you, please answer them by fire. And let it be well with them. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Now, I want to rejoice with those of you who have come forward, those of you who are in front, and those of you who are at the balcony. I want to promise you, God helping me from now on, I'll be praying for you. But I will need your names, I will need your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors are giving you a card now. I want you to fill the card very quickly because we have to rush now. Uh, but I must have your names, your address, and your prayer requests. Now, in the meantime, the rest of us will we we'll just wait two minutes for them to finish. But in the meantime, get your uh, smartphone ready. Switch on the light there because we are about to pray some prayers. Okay. Oh, God bless the owners of this place. It will prosper them. Do you know that they have just decided out of their generosity to give me another 15 minutes? You say, how do you know? Then my father told me. I said, my father told me. They've decided to give me 15 minutes. Uh, so we have enough time to do what we are about to do in 15 minutes. And in 15 minutes time, we'll be out of here. All right. Now, those of you who are filling the form, have you finished? I give you 30 seconds more out of my 15 minutes. Oh, glory be to God. Now, let all of us stand on our feet. You're going to pray three prayers very quickly. The first one is you're going to cry to the Almighty God. You're going to say, Father, tonight, shine your light into my life, into my home, into my business, into New York, into America. Father, shine your light. Go ahead, pray. Almighty God, shine your light. Shine your light into my life, into my home, into my business, into my ministry, into New York, into America. Shine your light, O Lord. Almighty God, shine your light. Chase away every form of darkness, O oh Lord, from my life, from my home, from my place of work, from New York. Chase away every evil force from America. Chase away every force of darkness. Shine your light, Lord. Decree like you did then that there must be light. Decree light into my life. Let your spirit move, O oh Lord, 
Let your power descend. Terminate all those who are trying to terminate my destiny. Shine your light, Lord. Let my emptiness be over. Let there be no more confusion in my life. Shine your light, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. You're going to pray a second prayer. I say, Father, now that my light is shining, don't let the light ever go out. Go ahead, pray that prayer with all your heart. Don't let darkness overcome me at all. Let my light keep on shining, shining forever. Let my light continue to shine and shine and shine forever, forever, forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You're going to pray a tough prayer, but you're going to do something before you pray that one. Anytime we have an opportunity like this to be in the presence of God, we always give him a thanksgiving offering. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Uh, we don't have time to begin to explain to you how to do it. It's up to you. But when you say thank you to God for what he has done, he will do more. I'm sure you know that. Uh -huh. So you're going to pray this prayer, but you must have your thanksgiving offering ready so that as soon as we finish praying, you give your thanksgiving offering and you'll be on your way. You're going to lift your voice to the almighty God. Loud and clear. And you will pray this prayer with every strength within you. You are going to say, Father, because you have given me light, I hereby decree, Satan, take your hands off me. Oh, go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I am now commanding because of the light you have given me, Satan, take your dirty hands off me, take your dirty hands off my family, take your dirty hands off my home, take your dirty hands off my business, take your dirty hands off New York, take your dirty hands off America. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus, because God has given me light. I command you, Satan, take your dirty hands of me and of mine. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, I'm about to pray for you. After I've prayed for you, you put on the light. You drop your thanksgiving offering. You go home rejoicing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Organist, don't want any sound. In the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, my God, I want to thank you. Because whenever you want to perform a miracle, you do it suddenly. Thank you for visiting us tonight. Ah, thank you, Father. Accept our thanks to Jesus. I am your representative to these people. And I'm their representative to you. Lord, on behalf of this, your children, I am saying right now, let there be light. In the lives of these children, let there be light. In their homes, let there be light. 
in their places of work, let there be light. In New York, let there be light. In America, let there be light. Every problem they brought in here, my Father and my God, let your light chase away. Everything that is bad in their life, change to good. Everything that is very bad, let it become very good. From now on, let them keep on succeeding. Let them keep on prospering. Fight for them. Defend them. Promote them. Prosper them. Draw them close to yourself. And Lord God Almighty, even before tomorrow morning, let them have testimonies. And uphold every one of us in the end, so that in your kingdom, none of us will be missing. So let it be. For so I decree it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, with the light, let's make the devil mad. Wave the light again. Wave it again. And then shout a big hallelujah. And then very quickly, take your Thanksgiving offering. Thank you for the envelope. And then dance as the, the band will be playing. You see, I think you should say just one word of prayer for the owners of this place that the Almighty God will continue to prosper them. Say it, say it with your mouth. Because they have extended my time a little longer. Wonderful people. It will be well with you. The light of God will shine into you all. And now, so we can now dance and give a thanksgiving offering and you can go home rejoicing. Quickly. Bang. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I never knew you will know me this way. I never knew you will know me this way. I never knew you will know me this way. As you are know me this way. I said,